What is up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Weekend in the Garage. In this episode, we're gonna be changing up a little bit. We're gonna be talking about some updates on the garage and the channel. It's been about 10 months since my first video, and in my first video, we did that. But the production quality was really bad, my sound was horrible, and it's kind of hard to watch. So for new people on the channel, and people that just wanna get updated in general, because I'm sure my videos have been all over the place with the drift season and everything. So I want to kind of go over everything again, all my projects, plans to finish those projects, plans for going on to the winter, and then plans for the channel for the future. So let's jump into it. Let's start talking about these projects. So to start it off, we're gonna talk about my Turbo Miata, which is a 1.8 liter eBay turbo kit, forged bottom end, drift car. Uh, it's got a mega squirt, tuned it myself, upgraded fuel injectors, probably like 200 horsepower, 10 PSI. It's a ripper. But in the last video, you will have noticed I crashed it. We ended up hitting someone mid drift, no hard feelings, but we gotta get it fixed because we have a drift event in three weeks, two weeks, depending on if we get this done and if money's right. So we're, I'm trying to go to Import Alliance, but we'll see if that happens, but we're definitely drifting NSS, the Halloween bash. If you're local, you should definitely come out. It's gonna be an awesome event. We're all gonna be dressed up. It's gonna be a good time. But we need to fix the upper control arm. I gotta remake it. If you watched a couple videos back, I made some custom arms that I can adjust the camera in the back. So currently this side, has an OE one and it's got camber and that's no good. I plan to fix a quarter this winter in the down season. So I'm not too worried about that to finish off the season. I just need to get that fixed, get it back to zero camber so we can finish the season out. Other plans as we go into the winter, uh, obviously the quarter, I would like to get a new transmission for this, a six speed or a BMW ZF transmission and crank up the boost. The five speed is a limiting factor right now. If I crank it up anymore, it'll probably blow second gear, which I've already done before. That's the plan though, is to get a new transmission and then start doing supported mods to crank up the boost because I want to get about 300, 400 horsepower out of this thing and make it a nice ripper. So on to the next car. So the next car is my 1991 Honda Civic station wagon. It is right hand drive as you can see right there. And it's also all wheel drive. And before I started my YouTube channel, I ended up manual swapping this. As you can see, I got it auto and I goofed when I did that. So currently this car is broken because the shift linkage has came apart. You're supposed to put these little washers on the top of the linkage and I did not do that. So it ended up working its way out and pushed itself out of the bushing. We gotta fix that. I've got all the proper washers from Honda to put it back on. Um, I tried fixing it once off camera and it was I was struggling trying to get the bushing back into the, the actual circle of the shift linkage. So that's gonna be fun. We gotta tackle that before this weekend because we have a big Honda meet at the Dragon, which I'm really trying to attend. So we'll be jumping on that later in this video after we talk about the rest of these cars. So as it sits, it's just a weekender right now. Um, I would like to get it painted one day, kind of take it to shows and whatnot. I don't want to like do any performance mods or anything. It's just a nice little fun weekend car for me and Sydney. So on to the next one. So the next project is another EF wagon. Um, I just started on this one, but I had to get pulled off when we started on the Miata, but a little rundown on that. So I pulled the motor on this one and ended up having a rod thrown through the block so the block's trashed. I still got the head, maybe we can use the head for something else, but I ended up picking up a donor car. It's a 1991 Honda Civic SI hatchback and the thing was gone, like the body was gone, but the motor and everything was pretty good. I stripped it of everything. The engine, transmission, the linkage, the harness, you name it, I've got it in that in that garage and it should be going into here to get this thing running so that's the plan right now is to get this running get on the road and then hopefully start making it look pretty paint job and stuff and then flip it because anything that i get from this i can throw back into the channel get some cooler builds more interesting builds onto the channel for now it sits there's no motor in it we need to get it back in the bay uh but that wagon is first so on to the next thing on to our next vehicle, right beside the wagon, is I think this is an 89 uh, GMC 1500. It's a V6, two-wheel drive, auto. This thing didn't even come like with factory AC, but they did get a dealer option AC in it, which I was trying to take out when I stopped working on it. As you can tell, there is no dash in here. And then I got all the supporting stuff to put factory AC in it. So that's where we left off on this. And the motor's still in here. I have drove this and I think it should be a nice little truck once we get it running, but it's gonna need a lot of work. So the motor leaks like a son of a bitch. So we'll probably have to take it back out and reseal and everything, but the body itself's pretty good. I can't find any major rust and the frame looks pretty good as well. 
So I'm pretty excited to work on this. I want to swap something crazy in it, but for now I'd like to get it just running to have something so I don't have to drive that all the time. And I'd also like this for Sydney to drive too because that thing stick shift. The only car that Sydney can drive is her car in there, which kind of sucks. So I'd really like to get this thing running. I was also gifted the truck for free. So it kind of means a little bit to get it running for me and Sydney because Sydney's dad gave it to us. So pretty excited for this one. It'd be my first American vehicle that I'll be modding and working on. Pretty excited about that. On to the next one. So the next car is this 91 Honda Civic. It's a DX. We got this for a parts car for Sydney. We're gonna be pulling our parts off of it and then Raymond will be ended up taking it from us. Raymond did come over and we pulled the heads off of this. And the backstory of this vehicle from the previous owner is that this car was running and then it ended up dropping valves and they parked it for God knows how long, probably like five to 10 years. So we ended up pulling the heads off of it and sure enough, the valves were burnt, but the head looks really clean and the block looks really clean. So we're kind of baffled on what actually happened, but we want to take the head, get it sent off and checked out, make sure it's flat and everything, get new valves lapped in it and throw it back on here and see if we can get it running. Plan is to get it running, get it nice and give it to Raymond's brother. I still need to get parts off of it for Sydney's car. But other than that, I mean, it should be a nice little river for his brother once we get it running. So next is my 2017 Civic Type R. It's my daily, so I haven't done any modifications to it. We did just pay it off, so hopefully we can start doing some modifications to it. I would like to do some rims, suspension and stuff, but everything I wanna put on this is gonna be a lot of money. We'll see what happens, uh, but regardless, it'll be on the channel for here and there. Um, Cindy did say when I get it paid off that I can start taking it to the track. So maybe we'll do that if she stakes to her word. So. <laughs> That'd be cool. Just see what it's about, see what it can do. Um, I know these things overheat pretty bad um, and they have blow by issues. So maybe we'll have to address that. That's, that's pretty cheap things we can probably address. So on to the next thing. Can't forget the tow pig. So this is my 2003 Ford F-250 with a 7.3 liter in it. It's got 163,000 miles on it now. It's got the five speed transmission in it with the super low gear. Sadly, it is an extended cab. I would love to have a crew cab, but I was a noob when buying this. It also was a really, really good deal when I got this truck uh, about five years ago. So I can't complain too much. For now, plans for this truck is just kind of keep it on the road, keep it ready to go. Next season, all of us Miata guys are trying to travel for drifting and get out of Tennessee, kind of see the other scenes. It's also pretty good for me, getting my name out there, the YouTube channel and everything. So we need this truck ready to go, ready to rip. Currently it doesn't leak any oil or anything. I scratched that. I'm pretty sure it leaks from the turbo pedestal. Um, so we need to do that and I, really paranoid about the cooling system failing on this so i want to do that as well future mods i'd really like to do a nice tuner have the like display with all the information on it and then injectors trying to crank, crank with the power a little bit make this thing not much as a dog also a more efficient turbo would be sick because the turbo on it right now uh, i just found out is an ambulance turbo which my buddy andy told me that those things are like a little bit bigger and it makes it really sluggish which makes sense now i mean this thing doesn't start spooling to like 1800 so the power band is like not even there, but it's an awesome truck. I love it. Got a good deal on it. So I can't complain too much, but on to the next car. So the next car is our 91 Honda Civic SI, which is my wife's. This is our project between me and her getting this running for her. It's got a B18 in it. The interior is pretty nice. The body is really nice. Other than there's a spot back here, which you can see it's been hit. But it should be a nice little car. We ended up running into an issue. We got it running. We did our first test drive on it and the heater core ended up leaking all in the car. So we had to take the dash out, which we already planned on taking the dash out because we were gonna get a new one that wasn't cracked or fix that one. But while we were in there, we ended up starting diving into other things like the battery wiring was pretty bad. Um, it was going all the way to the back and it was not done properly. So we're gonna put it back to the front. It's set while we ordered parts. Now we got a bunch of parts from the SI that I use for the wagon. We got a new dash. Cindy ordered all the parts she needed. So we got everything to put this back together this winter and start working on it again. So the plans for this right now to get it put back together, get it running. I would like to get AC in it and we need a new exhaust. And then that will get this thing pretty nice and comfortable. Also teach Cindy how to drive stick in it. Then hopefully we can move on to doing body work, get this thing looking really good. But for now, we really want to get it running, get AC and everything in it and just get it on the road so we can drive it. And then we move on to my car that I've had for years now. This is my 91 Honda Civic station wagon RT full drive. I have been working on this thing since sophomore year of college. 
I ended up taking it completely off the road, taking all the harnesses out and everything, got way above my head, and it has set for a very long time. As you can tell, we got a complete color change. This is Suzuka Blue off of S2000. It used to be red, as you can kind of see right there. It's a really nice car. I think I've got everything to put it back together. I've tried my best to keep up with everything in between moving and whatnot. To get this thing back on the road, got the harness all taken apart. I was trying to put it into some sleeving and make it look nice. So we gotta finish that. And then we just gotta lay out all these parts and then put it back together. Also, the last thing is I did have this on air ride. I bought the cheap air ride, which it didn't set well on this because it was made for an EG. So aired out, it was still up in the air. And I ended up cutting the rear strut tires out and raising them. Well, now since we're gonna go static and everything, I don't like that. So that's why we bought this car back here. I wanna cut the rear struts out of that, the OE ones. Got all the spot welds and then spot weld it back in here. Make it look factory, seam seal and everything. Make it look good and get it back to where it should be. Which, moving on to this car, after all that said and done, I was thinking about creating this into a trailer to pull behind either the RTI or if we end up keeping this thing, the shows. That, in a nutshell, is all of our projects. I probably left out a lot of details. I don't want to ramble on too much and lose everyone. But if you have questions about anything, any of these projects, that I didn't answer, I didn't bring up. Leave them down in the comments. I, I read every comment, I respond to every comment, and if anything, I'll just make another video on just that car talking about it if you want me to. Now, we need to fix the wagon, get ready for this weekend, so let's dive into that. So this is the issue that is wrong with the wagon. Since this is an RT full drive model, they have cable shifters instead of um, a rod which is most civics have rods on them so i goofed and put these cotter pins to hold them down and as you can tell the bushing walked its way out and luckily this came apart just right down the road from our house when this comes out you can't go into i think it was first second reverse fourth fifth maybe but yeah it was a uh, kind of scary i thought more was broke than this but as you can tell i tried putting it back in off camera a while back and it did not go hot um so that's why it's been parked because i knew it was going to be an issue trying to get this back in but i think i have a plan now my plan is to get that bushing back out and then grind the edges down on it and just I guess basically make it smaller so it slips in easier. Um, I mean really all it needs to do is hold that linkage there. I mean it doesn't need to be like press fit exactly but it doesn't need to be loose loose so we need to be careful how much we take off but I think it's my best bet because what was going on there and it's not going to go anymore. It's fighting me every step of the way. So I'm going to try to get that back out and then we'll see if we can grind down the outside. So we got it out. I used the socket to catch it and then a nut and bolt to push it back out. I probably should have done this in the first place to push it in, but you know, you live and learn. But you see the little lip right there was folded. That's what was keeping us from going all the way through. Whoops. <laughs> all right, back out of the trash. So that's what was keeping us going all the way through. So I think I'm going to cut that lip off and then that should make it a little bit easier to push through and then we can use this method to push it back through, you know, the smart boy way. So cut that off and let's try that out. So we got the bushing reinstalled. So now we can put it back together and I've got the right stuff from Honda this time because the reason this happened is I didn't have the OE washers that came with all this uh, because I took apart my blue car, which is where we robbed the transmission from and God knows where all that stuff is and I just didn't feel like looking for it and I didn't think about this happening. So I sourced all the parts I needed from Honda we have the washer, which there's the part number for it. We have this like little plastic washer that goes under this one. And then same here. So this is for the smaller one. This is for the bigger one. And then we have the cotter pins. So just OE cotter pins. <laughs> and that's the part number for that. So if you run into this issue like I did, they still sell some of this stuff. So get it while you can. So we got everything back together. Got the cotter pins and everything on. And they are pretty stiff. Don't think we'll have any issues anymore. Also got that tight. I need to get the proper wrench for that because I have to use an adjustable every time. It's kind of a pain in the ass. But we need to get the intake back on, then we go for a test drive, and also get Sydney some food because she's a little hangry. So let's get this intake back on. All right, that is on. Let's grab our light, and let's go for a test drive. What was that? Is it recording? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
flash is different. Um, so we're going on our test drive. I think everything should be fine. I mean, that's not good. So next day out here, we got the car pulled in last night, put on the trickle charger and let it sit because the car's battery was dead. You saw in the clip, we got down the road just like two minutes and the throttle like stuck wide open and I freaked out. Uh, so I turned the car off and obviously the battery's dead so I couldn't restart it. Uh, had Sydney with me so I had to run back to the house, get her car, we had to jump it off. We're in the middle of the road around a blind turn that people fly down. And, my battery's dead, so my hazards are really dim. I was freaking out. I think someone's gonna like plow the car or something. I ended up kind of getting it to not stick and limped it home, thank God. Uh, we also met a neighbor while we were out there because we were in front of his house. I don't know if you call him neighbor. He's like seven houses down. But regardless, his name's Ben. And he said something that stuck with me because he was asking me about vlogging because he saw Sandy with a camera. <laughs> and he goes, you know, I'm sure you're recording this because you gotta show the good and the bad. And I was like, ah, yeah, I'm really got bad at showing the bad, so. I'm going to get better on that so y'all can see when stuff goes bad, y'all can see how I'm handling everything. But where we're at now is last night off camera, I put PB Blaster on the clock spring of the throttle body and I worked a lot. So I think the spring itself was sticking. I'm hoping I didn't leave anything in the throttle body after all the work with the uh, shifter linkage because I had that tube off. So we're going to check the battery voltage, make sure it's charged up, and then go for a drive and see if it sticks. Because if it's sticking, we got to figure out a fix. I think I got two spare throttle bodies if we needed it, but I think I fixed it last night. We should be good. So let's check the battery voltage, see what we're setting. All right, let's get that there. That should be enough to start it. It's only been on the charge for like a little over 12 hours, so I think it was sitting at like eight or nine. So not too bad, but should start up. So let's see the throttle sticks. God, I haven't driven this car so long, it's so damn slow. <laughs> good. I think it was just rusty from sitting outside. I think the PB blaster worked. Uh, I think the gas is on your side. Can't remember. It is. Alright, made it to the gas station.
was looking at the clips last night, and I saw you got a nice little B-roll shot. Good job. I didn't do it whenever you're messing with your engine, though. It can set on red line for a little bit. It's not turbo motor, but it, it does get your, your heart racing when it's ramping up. So the test drive went good, no real major hiccups. We drove for about 20, 30 minutes. On the interstate though, I did see my temperature kind of go to the middle. And I remembered that this was an issue that I was about to start fixing before the shift linkage dropped. So right now we've got it hooked up with our little funnel to bleed it. And as you can tell, it's already burping. So that's a good sign that nothing else is wrong. It probably just needed to be bled. Um, so we're gonna let it set for a little bit, for like 20, 30 minutes, let it get all the air out. And I think we should be good for the long drive. There's a couple more things I wanna do to the car. I need to get this off and reinstall the visor because I don't want to be rolling around with just the front visors. It looks kinda lame, especially around a lot of Honda nerds, which is gonna be this weekend. So let's let this set for a second, let it bleed, and then we'll jump on the back, get all that double side tape off. So the car's driving good, just got it washed. Now I need to head back through those visors and we should be good to go to Tell Dragon. Next day, got the car all cleaned up. Now we need to install these. So these are my rear window visors. You know anything about Civics? These are very expensive. So Try my best to be careful reinstalling them and make sure they're installed good and that they don't fall off. I also got this little eraser wheel to take off the old stuff. You can see I've already started a little bit here. Try my best not to eat into it and just get it off there, but it is a dirty job as you can tell. So I'm going to get this side done. Um, the other side is not as bad. It just has a little bit on it so get the harder side done get these put on so got all the excess glue removed got the new 3m tape on there that stuff kicked my ass i still have to do this one um, but i think i've got a method now so also got this prep with this uh adhesive promoter that i bought so hopefully that works out so let's get this on there all right we're on Oh, that looks so much better. So, let's get this other side on now. So we got all the double side tape moved off this one. I did not use the goo on. So, that don't do don't do this. This did not help in the last one. It made it worse, I think. So try to use a razor blade and without cutting into the plastic, let it like flex and bend use both hands trying to scrape it off. That's like the best method I can come up with. You're actually you're going to scratch the plastic which I mean I don't think there's any way around that but with the new devil side tape it should cover it up I mean up here you don't really care about it's here so don't scratch here that's why I have all those these rags down so it doesn't get scratched so let's get it prepped and throw back on the car so I got the last one on I think I might have cracked it I can't remember if it was already cracked or not but it kind of fought me as I was putting it on it was like one to cockeye so but we got it Everything's good to go. So I think that's all we're gonna do for the wagon. I think we are good to go for this event. If you like this video, like always, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see you next one.